You know, that was one of the most incredible dog walks I've ever been a part of. The environment tonight created pre-game was electric, and I, you know, probably has a lot to do with the fact we were playing a top 25 team, but we also had a night game. But um, you can't find a better place to play in college football. Um, and, and our players love it, the coaches love it, recruits love it. You know, it's been a really big stretch of games for our players. You know, it's been a tough road. It's been consecutive games over and over after an off week. They bit the bullet. They played really hard through it. We haven't played perfect. We haven't always played smart, but we have played hard. Um, our goal today was to go out and compete hard, put our best foot forward, and uh, I still feel like our best football is ahead of us, and uh, we're a work in progress. So we all know nothing worth having comes easy, and I think our team has kind of started to figure that out, that if you buy in and work really hard during the week, it pays off on the weekend. But we got to remove some of these penalties, dumb penalties, you know, penalties that are our eras, and uh, we got to continue to improve uh, all phases of the game. But with that, we'll open it up. Uh, Lamont pretty much went the whole way, um, and it looked like he was kind of struggling a little bit out there at times. But what, what's it like to see a fifth-year senior kind of gut it out like, like he did and kind of battle through an injury like that? It's just indicative of the character of this team. I mean, he, he's a physical player. He works his tail off during the week. Uh, he's got some fire grips on to him. He, I think he'd make a good coach because he was trying to tell us what to do about half the time. He's probably right more than we are sometimes. But Lamont's a competitor, and he's a leader, and he's helped our team. Defense gave up that first fourth touchdown carry to seemed to get stronger throughout the game. So like that going on, I mean, they really. Yeah, you know, I, we didn't know how well they'd be able to run the ball, and we thought that we couldn't give up big plays. And uh, we played that way. We were a little uh, confused early. I think when you play these guys traditionally, you survive the first script, the first three or four drives uh, with Gus, and then you make adjustments and uh, you go play. And we did not play real well early, and it was sloppy, but our offense did possess the ball in the first half for what seemed like an eternity. And um, we played better in the second half defensively. DeAndre Swift, coach, uh, what, what would you say about his performance and how much better is he now than he was early in the year? Well, he was good early in the year. I mean, I don't know why people don't think he went good early in the year. He didn't get probably as many opportunities early in the year as he's getting now. Uh, he was dinged up some early, and he also uh, has got an offensive line that's blocking their tail off. I mean, at the end of the day, DeAndre's a really electric, explosive runner. He's really good out of the backfield catching the ball. But J.J. Holloman and Solomon Kenley and uh, Miko Hart, there's a lot of good blocks that spawn a 30-yard play to a – whatever it was, 60 or 70 yard play. And I think when you've got that, you know, it helps you as a runner. And DeAndre will be the first to admit that. Um, coach, at the end of the first half there, the the, the uh, touchdown pass to Terry Godwin, I mean, what kind of led y'all to try to go for it there? I, I know players said that y'all had worked on that uh, specific play for a week, but what kind of led y'all to go for it? Just thought it was the right thing. We're trying to, you know, we try every week to go look at scenarios across the country. And there were about four scenarios last week where teams mismanaged the clock and ran it down and tried to kick a field goal. And we felt like we could milk the clock. And if we went for it, we were going to kick a field goal. And um, if we didn't, they wouldn't have much time left. So we were trying to kind of put them on the ice. It's hard over there on the other sideline going, do I call timeout and give them more time or do I? Let them milk it, and uh, you know if you don't convert that, they've got a shot at a field goal. So you gotta have confidence in your players. You gotta show confidence in your offense. And I felt like at that time we needed to score points, and I was looking to get a field goal, but we had a big play. Coach Terry did, Terry did a tremendous job. It was a great route. Why, uh, why, why the fake field goal in the last few minutes? Why? Because <laughs> you had a comfortable lead. Comfortable. Maybe most comfortable. Don't want to show that. Seventeen plus play. three is what? Uh -huh. Twenty. And 20 is a what? Three score game you lose, right? So the, the point differential is three scores. What good does the field goal do you? Doesn't make it anymore. So if they don't get it, they're backed up, right? So the thought was they're going to take three touchdowns to beat us if we get that. If we don't, three touchdowns is going to beat us right away. So it's all about point differential and decisions, and we wanted them to have to start backed up. So 
it was something that was well thought out long before it happened. It was talked about during the drive. Coach, y'all mentioned the deal y'all won the third time today, converted a really good, good number of them. Just how key was that for us to the team tonight to convert the third? Third down was huge. I mean, they keep driving lives. What, what they do is they keep the defensive line and get pounded. You know, so when you sit there and say, all right, they're, they're getting pounded, pounded, pounded over and over, every third down conversion is more chop than wood. And uh, we continue to do a good job at third down conversions. We got good route runners, we got good pass protectors, and we got quarterbacks who can make plays uh, on third down. I, I thought that was the difference in the game 3 of 11, 8 of 14. That's, you said, well, you rushed the ball. Yeah, well, we got to rush the ball because we converted third downs. When it comes to that, going back to that, that fourth down play, um, you guys aren't an empty backfield team very often, but it's, it seemed like you had the perfect play call for the perfect time. Did you kind of know what you were going to get when you had to be the backfield there? Well, Jim makes that call. He makes a decision based on what they're going to be in. We're looking for matchups, which everybody in college football is looking for. There's no genius to it. It was a good call, a good throw, a good route, a good catch. And, you know, they were trying to stop us. If they stop us there, they may get points. So they were in an aggressive call as well. Kirby, I know you mentioned that you all have been better defensively like as the game progressed and in the second half, what were you doing better? I know they were doing a lot of screen game and trying to make you make you tackle me over the field. That's something you've been working on. Just what all did y'all do better? I thought we settled down. I mean, I felt like all week that they were gonna come out and do what they did and we probably, you know, weren't as prepared. There's so much to prepare for in the play hour. They have a ton of personnel groupings, a ton of looks. So you spend an enormous amount of time preparing for what you might get a little bit. And they gave us something that we didn't work on as much. And we had to put some packages together at halftime and do some different things. And we had some guys out there playing that, that don't play as much. And Mark Webb is a guy that had to go in the game and play a lot. And I thought he played well in, in the game and helped out. Kirby, what can you say about the job Eric Stokes um, did coming off the bench tonight? You know, he comes in and has a pass break up in the end zone right after he comes in. Huge play in that game. I mean, you think about that third down play, holds the field goal otherwise. I guess they're going up 14 to three, maybe at that time, or 14 to six. I mean, I don't know. He's a big play. And Eric Stokes is one of the hardest workers on our team. I mean, he's the epitome of team. And the guy hadn't complained, fussed, and all he's done is work. And all he's done is get better. And he'll continue to grow and compete. And, and Tyson will do the same. Tyson had a tough night. And uh, we've talked a long time about we're going to play the players that play the best. And I still think Tyson Campbell's a really good football player. Do you think that that end of the game was just an he made a mistake or two. Do you, how will that help him in the future? I'll be tremendous. On the job training. I mean, we wanted to grow the kid, let him, let him play with confidence, let him go out and play. And he did some good things, man. He did some good things in the game. He changed a couple runs um, that were really good. And uh, he, managed, he managed the game well up until the, you know, the shot clock and then the, the sack. And he knew it. He did it right. He said, my bad. I messed it up. And he'll grow from that. It's the best way to do it. Learn first and goal, goal line. You got two more downs. How would you have been around a lot of good defensive backs? What kind of season is, is DeAndre having as far as just teams not having a whole lot of success going in his direction? Oh, no, he may lead the league in passing appearances. I know that. He's got a lot of <laughs> but he, he doesn't want to give up a completion. So, um, DeAndre is a, a good leader. He, he leads by example. He works really hard. Um, he's helped the confidence of those other players around him. And he's not afraid. I mean, some guys shy away from the big moment. He wants to cover Terry Slate. He wants the opportunity to go cover. He'll come to you and tell him, put, put me on him, coach. I want to go do it. But uh, he's a good player. This is one of those nights where it's big with recruiting. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how many kids y'all had. How does this day go because you won? And what are you saying now? What are you guys how are you selling the business? Well, we, sell, we don't have to. I mean, Georgia sells itself with the crowd and the fan base. Mm -hmm. And you look out there and say, I can play in this atmosphere. I can play for championships. I can play in some of the biggest games in college football. I mean, I can get an education at the University of Georgia. It's one of the top 15 in the country. I mean, it's hard to argue with this. For us, it's more about finding the right fit. We want the right kind of players. I mean, I think our fan base just wants rankings. I, I just want kids that want to be here, that want to win for Georgia, that care about Georgia, that, that want to get a good education. I mean, think about Andrew Thomas, DeAndre Swift, some of these kids in that sophomore freshman class that are great students and great players, they're, they're what you want. And you got to go find those diamonds in the rough and go get them. I mean, they're not all five stars. We want good people. We want the right kind of people. We want people who can help our team win. Mm -hmm. What was uh, Kendall Baker dealing with? I don't know if Kate got paid up. Yeah, I'm not sure Kendall's yet. I mean, I don't have the, uh, the information on Kendall's. I know he's going to get an MRI. 
Cade probably could have kept playing. We felt like that uh, Kendall might play better. We're going to watch Cade early. Cade wouldn't necessarily do anything wrong, but we felt like Kendall would go in and play better. So we made a change there, and can't wait to find out what's wrong with uh, Kendall. Coach, what did you think about the red zone uh, issues tonight? Yeah, and but they're good, man. They're good. I mean, they're big. They're physical. We worked really hard on it. We uh, we emphasized to the team we did extra red zone periods because we felt like that could be the difference in the game. And it was without the play by Terry in the first half. And Jay, you know, it's, that's that's what you're going into half thinking about. But they're in the country in it. You know, or you're second in the country at holding you to field goals and. Uh, just got to get better at it. We'll continue to work at it. We did some different things tonight. It just didn't work out. Is it one of those things where when you're in the you know lower red area like that where so many guys are in the box, you just, your margin of error is just that much so yeah, small? everybody's that way. You know what I mean? I mean, you get the red area, you got to bully bully. Say, I'm running down the road. Well, who should be good at that? Georgia should. <laughs> you know what I mean? We should be able to do that. We haven't been able to do that and finish it. We, we've actually been better at the fades and the throws and the throw Jake makes and the penalty that – Justin makes when the guy grabbed him and held him and got an extra set of downs and the Florida game. I mean, we were throwing the ball down there. We've done that better than what we really are, what our identity is. So we just got to keep working on it. And our staff will do a good job putting packages together. Kirby, you use the term work in progress for this team. Can Every you week. Can you see it? I mean, can you see what the vision of what you need to be to go win an SEC championship in three weeks? Yeah, I'm, I'm really focused on UMass and trying to celebrate this one for about like three hours. If I could get that in, that would be good. Just three hours is all I want, and then I'll go to recruit in UMass. But we're, we're really worried about this team getting better. I shouldn't say worried. I should say that's the goal. And if the message is clear to them that you've gotten better for three straight weeks, you've played pretty good football teams, you just got to keep doing that. That's all we can worry about. We don't control anything else. All we control is how we play. And if you control that with your behaviors, we talk about behaviors all the time. Good behaviors create, I'm not, I'm not talking about going to bed at night. I'm talking about studying film. I'm talking about rest. I'm talking about recovery. Those are the things that are going to help us be a better football team. And we're growing a lot of young players up. You can second second a 300 yard rushing games against two pretty good defenses for Kentucky and Auburn. Is that a testament to Young offensive line get better and the back getting better, make it happen. It's, it's a testament to physicality. It's a testament to hard nosed, tough, physical, grind you out, persistent, run the ball, convert third downs, and, and manage the game that way. Kirby, last week in Kentucky, I asked Fromm, did he know that you guys were 10 0 when Swift entered the end zone? And then he said, laugh, and said no. And then I just asked Godwin the same thing, and he laughed and said no. So did, were you aware that you guys no. are now 11 0 when mm -hmm. Swift made it in the end zone? No, I had no idea. I, sometimes there's a lot of amazing stats out there, but maybe we got to get him in the end zone more often. The young players that are emerging was this was this a is it a blueprint thing or is this just something that's happened with this 2018 signing class? Yeah, sure. I know what you're asking. Is it a blueprint thing? I mean, I, Tyson Campbell has played all along. You know what I mean? I mean, Kate Mays has played all along. So I don't know that. I think it's each individual kid on a different basis. I mean. If they get better and they're the best player, then they play. We think the cumulative effect of reps throughout the year allow young players to grow. So we strategically give them reps, even when they're not ready. We don't say, oh, you're not ready to go to the scout team. We say, oh, you could be ready by game seven, game eight, game nine. Why don't we go ahead and give this guy reps, even though it may take reps away from another guy? And we've tried to manage that with players that we think can help our team. And that is a, that's a good class. There's some good players. In, in those two young classes, the freshman and sophomore play. Two more questions. When you think about the third down success y'all have been having in recent weeks, is Jake doing something better than he was maybe a month ago when you weren't having the, quite as much success? I don't know if he's playing well. He's, playing. he's making good decisions with the ball on his third down plays, um, and he's getting good protection. The biggest difference to me is the protection, the pocket hadn't melted down on him. He's looking at it and, and making good decisions. And when we run the right route, which we had a busted route tonight in the red area, and we protect, we're pretty good at getting guys open and, and throwing the ball and catching the ball. Last question? Thank you. Thanks, guys.